Hey everyone, welcome back to another 6.5 on the road here at Evolve New York City, brought to you by Cloudera, Intel, IBM. Excited for another great conversation, joined by my co-host and keynote extraordinaire at today's event, Patrick Moorhead. Hey Pat. Daniel, you're too kind. No, it's been a fun day. I mean, the content's been, been great, kind of, and, and you know, just talking to Rob one-on-one -on -one in our interview that we did, or two-on-one, -on -one, uh, it's, I'm fascinated how far the, the company has, ha, ha, has come. And, and also it's been great to meet with some customers, get real insights. We're live, we're back. We're not remote, we are here right now. Yeah, it was interesting though, because you and I as industry analysts spent what, we did 47, 48 weeks a year on the road in 2019, and then we went right. through to 2021. And, and I saw them ask the question about how many people were back for the first time at a live event, and like, half the room raised their hands. And you and I have probably been to like 50 events since exactly. the pandemic was somewhat marked as uh, responsibly okay to be back out in public. Right. So we've seen this sort of transition, but a lot of people are just getting out for the first time. So this event is great. You might hear a little bit of the energy in the background, but very excited. We've got Ram and Bill joining us here to talk a little bit about Iceberg, talk about data. So just a quick introduction from each of you. Ram, I'll start with you. Welcome Absolutely. to the show. First of all, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, Ram Venkatesh, CTO here at Cladera. So I'm responsible for our, our technology vision and strategy. And you saw, you saw today earlier about the, the announcements we made in the hybrid space. So we're pretty excited by the, the power of what we can do together in the space with data in the, in the context of hybrid multi-cloud data management. Yeah. So this is Bill Chung. I'm a senior director and a product manager for uh, Iceberg. So very excited to be here and to talk about Iceberg. Now it's nice to meet uh, both of you. Great conversation in the green room or the green area, I guess, uh, getting ready for this. But I have to ask, why do we need yet another tool like Iceberg? Don't we have enough data something, data X out there? It's a good question. Look, I think the way I think about this is, over the last decade or so, we've been taking individual parts of a monolithic stack and separating it out. You know, the biggest one that everybody knows about, of course, is storage and compute. Right. Why did we do that? Because then you could go scale each of these pieces independently and get value by doing that. There was a piece in the middle, right? That's the piece that says, here's the relational shape or definition for all of your data. Right. This is the table format, right? Previously, this piece was always tied up with one particular engine or one particular store or one particular vendor technology. Now, this was always considered so niche to making things work that there was no way to separate it out. With Apache Iceberg, this is the piece that we've decided that this is going to be a first class thing. Right. Now, think of this as a, I like to think of this as a disaggregation journey where by, by making this piece stand alone, we can unlock a tremendous amount of value. That's the reason why we are focused so much around Iceberg. It's interesting, disaggregation, Pat, just seems to come up across every part of tech. You know, you and I uniquely don't focus as analysts on just one thing. Right. right? We work within the semi space, we work in app space, and we work on everything in between. And we have just kind of continuously hear this, everything goes, it's like a, yeah, it's a, what do you call it, an accordion? An accordion. It's yeah. the accordion, you know, we're, we're, we're back in the era of disaggregation. And I think a lot of this has to do with the migration to hybrid, because you can't, what works for public doesn't necessarily work for private, and hybrid means you need to take kind of the best of everything, and in some cases, architect completely new structures. Is that what Iceberg is? Is it really the, the, the tool for ushering in the hybrid era? Yeah, Iceberg is the linchpin, really, that makes this cloud-native hybrid architecture go. Like, one of the cool things I think about this space is that Hybrid is not a least common denominator. You don't take the same thing and run it everywhere in the same way and hope that it all works out. That's just too expensive, too slow, too clunky. Right. right? So if you really want to be cloud native, I think that's where high, having Iceberg be the, the thing that actually helps us decouple the table definitions from the underlying storage, lets us be hybrid, you know, sort of have our cake and eat it too. That's that's the thing that the promise of Iceberg really unlocks for us. So, Bill, what um, are some differentiators on on your approach? I think you have a lot of firsts out there. I think we talked that you're the first hybrid commercialized solution, but but what else? I mean, 
Prior iceberg uh, drops have been single engine, uh, as an example. What are you doing across those lines to differentiate your, your Yes, product? that's actually a great point. Uh, first of all, we have integrated iceberg into our Cloudera data platform. As you know that there are many compute engines within our Cloudera platform, Hive, Spark, Impala, NiFi, Flink. And what we're doing is actually enable all those multi-engine being able to access and process iceberg table simultaneously. So this is one of the strongest points that I want to share with you and share with our customers. Yeah, that's definitely, definitely unique and a real testament to the overall architecture of CDP, almost like they thought of that when they architected it. <laughs> Yeah there's, like, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's so many different potential, um, you know, layers of abstraction to get value. And, but in the end, I mean, that's what this is all about. So maybe as you're sort of positioning this, and I'll let you both kind of answer this at your own, because obviously working as CTO and leading product, it might be a little bit different, but I'm guessing that you're, you're out and about, you're getting feedback from partners, you're getting feedback from customers. What's the reception been as you're kind of out there um, introducing the iceberg plus the whole hybrid approach. Are you getting a warm reception? Are you feeling people are going to be quick to adopt? What's kind of the initial reaction? It's been overwhelmingly positive, you know, both in the context of hybrid and also the modern data architecture narrative. Customers really love the fact that now we are describing the solution in terms of the problem that they have. You know, right. they have multiple engines, right? They, they want to run on premise. They want to run in the cloud, right? With these realities, they are looking for ways to make this be seamless, transparent, with a lower cost footprint, and that's what Iceberg does for them. So, Bill, I want to, you know, to chime in on like some of the customer stories that we've already seen in the short while that Iceberg has in GA on our stack. Yeah, sure. Uh, what I'd like to do is actually talk about some of the uh, three early adapters that we have. Right, One of the customers is actually our referenceable customer, Terranet. So what Terranet does is that uh, they want uh, they want they provide a real time near real time analytics for their analysts. So previously they are dumping the uh, the, uh, the database log uh, from their on prem database to the cloud, but they can only do that once a day. Now they want to actually increase the frequency of those transaction log dumping to the uh, to the lo uh, to the cloud so that they are doing that once a day with our iceberg technology now with once an hour uh, from once a day to once an hour now they're actually providing near real time analytics right. for their analysts and also some of the advanced capabilities such as partition evolution so they can change the partition schema and the more, uh, more finer grain so that they're providing much better performance based on the data sets that they have. So this is a Terranet example. The other one that I want to share with you is uh, with our global pharmaceutical company. And uh, what they want to do is actually providing a forensic analysis for their, uh, you know, who actually access data sets at a certain point. Now, one of the key capability uh, we're providing through Iceberg and our CDP integration is what we call time travel. So through time travel capability, they will know exactly who had access to what at a certain point. So that's a point in time forensic uh, analysis. The third example that I want to share with you is with a global uh, automobile company. And what they want to do is actually they want to, uh, you know, they, they also have those di different vehicles div uh, and each vehicle will actually uh, sending different logs to their database. And that they want to do some deep analysis to help them to, to do predictive maintenance, to do customer behavior analysis. So all those information is actually in the log that they transmitted from the vehicle. So they want to actually do near real time as well because uh, um, the, there's a lot of energy being in the real time. So the, the advantage they're looking for, the feature they're looking for is, uh, again, uh, some of the partition evolution that I just mentioned earlier, is be, they can actually change the partition to much finer granular detail so that improve the performance. So from their early analysis, they are seeing that uh, hey, they can improve the performance been tenfold tremendous performance improvement and that they can provide the real-time analytics for their uh, use cases, uh, predictive maintenance, uh, customer behavior analysis. Yeah, what's really, well first of all, I'm impressed because most announcements, the way they go is you announce one year, 
uh, and then you have POC, maybe two or three customers that show up, and then you go GA. You're GA on Iceberg, right? That yes. is correct. Now that's, in that's fact, good. Very yeah. different, by the way, from what, you, what, we're, what we're used to. I think the pandemic helped us a little bit in this case. We've been working on you know, this technology now for about 18 months. Right, we've been active in the Iceberg community. That's one of the things that we should talk about. Like, right. Iceberg is not so much a, it's not a Cloudera thing. Right? That the fact that there is a community, an ecosystem of partners building together, this all helps. So there's momentum there where we invest our development resources into Iceberg, but there's other large players in the community that One we One announced them, a big announcement yesterday, a big exactly. uh, public cloud provider. Correct, uh, all the hyperscalers are in. Right. Exactly, right? So, the, so this lets us sort of bring this innovation faster to the market. Now what we can do as being good stewards of the community is that we can bring our customer use cases, we can bring the enterprise readiness that you right. need to go with this, correctness, all of the things that are sort of implicit in you know, some of the customers like the ones that Bill is talking about for them to deploy at scale. So being able to do that in the context of a community, that's been helpful in bringing this technology to the market as fast as we could. Yeah, for sure. So what are some of the you know, as we, as we tie off this conversation, by the way, you guys, great job, really appreciate it. This is hard stuff to explain. I mean, theoretically, everybody hears the anecdotal, what we can do with data, but now you you're really are kind of getting into the guts of all the complexity, multiple systems, sources, structured, unstructured, edge, cloud, prem. I mean, these are, this is a there's, hard There's a lot problem. to take What in, is the yeah. risk? Where is the, where are you finding, you know, our customers, um, what are, they, what are they most apprehensive about in this migration to, say, Iceberg? Are you running into, what are the hurdles that are coming so up? It, put it simply, there's three things that we want to be very mindful of. The first one is around correctness, right? Like any data system, you have to be able to trust the results that come out of that system. If you cannot do that, you know, Truth. the rest of it is moot, right? So with Iceberg, this is where having someone like say Netflix has been running Iceberg at scale, hundreds of petabytes for the last four years. Right? This is huge, this is the sort of, you know, this is a wrong metaphor for this topic would be the, the stuff below the waterline, right, yeah. right? Where somebody is running at scale in production where they can rely on the data, the results that you're getting from that system. I think that's the fundamental risk that's usually associated with bringing a new technology like this to the market. And I think that this is where the way Iceberg came together, we have a lot of confidence in the fact that it's had a lot of road miles, it's had a lot of proof points that we can point to and say, this is why we think this is a good solution. By, by the way, um, very consistent with some of my earlier interviews. You weren't here for one I had, but we actually talked about, I used the metaphor of a skyscraper, because I basically said, you know, all that plumbing, um, you know, you see these buildings here in New York come out of the ground, but they're, but they're the foundation built has to be really the ground. Good. Yeah. And that's the data management and all the hygiene and the compliance and, you know, residency and sovereignty and, and architectures. You can't go to, you know, iceberg if you haven't done that foundational stuff correctly. And I think so many people want to get to that end state. Everybody wants to, how do we quickly get insights from our data? Yeah. Well, the companies that are doing it well, if most of them have been doing it for like decades. They've had good behaviors and habits. And of course, companies like yours can help them speed that up and help them do better and give them best practices. But a company that has a mess of a data ecosystem can't just be like, oh, we're just going to go over to Iceberg and throw some stuff in the public cloud and we'll be fine. That's not, that's not how it works. Yeah, that's, that's not a recipe for, for sustainable success, right? That's the thing is that I think the effects of being a data-driven business, they really start to pay off if you can build on top of the successes you've had. It's like compound interest, right? So if you have two use cases today and you get to five the next year and 10 or 100 the year after, that's when you really start to see this exponential value. Like this, the, the automobile customer that Bill is talking about, they started off with one single customer 360 use case seven years ago, right? Now they have more than 100. So I think that's, that is where we see the power of the platform and being able to sort of have you know, additional ways to derive value from data faster. That's really key for companies to be able to monetize their data effectively. Love compound interest. No, compound <laughs> in interest is great. I know. I mean, I think this is a, a good place to close off the conversation here. Ram and Bill, really appreciate your time here. And by the way, congratulations on being first to market with a hybrid iceberg solution, and also one that's multi-engine. I think that's great, and it, it, it's always good to be first to market, but first to market, but bulletproof. 
and industrial strength. Because you know you see a lot of people who do press releases and you know it's three years out. So literally customers can do iceberg today as long as they've got good hygiene and a good data architecture, right? Okay, exactly. okay, good. You got it. Your heads are nodding, my head's nodding, this is great. So I want to thank you for coming on. Really exciting journey, uh, educating so many people about, uh, about Iceberg. And we'd love to have you on uh, in a little bit to get a pulse on how it's doing and about the growth of it. Absolutely, yeah. thanks Thank for having us on the show. Us. Thanks. Thank you. So, uh, this is Pat Moorhead with the 6.5 signing off with my incredible co-host Daniel Newman and incredible Bill and Rom here. We hope you like the show. If you like what you heard, hit that subscribe button. Uh, we are signing off here from New York City Evolve 2022. Have a great morning, lunch, evening, wherever you are. Take care. <laughs>